NXT 2016. This is interviews, music reviews, opinions, and more. This is, this is The Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are rolling audio and video here today on episode 247 of The Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. You're staying safe. You're staying healthy. Thank you so very much for tuning in and clicking that play button on today's episode of the podcast. We have a really fun, but also kind of a the probably the most serious episode of The Hotter Show you're ever going to hear. I sit down with Will and Mitch from Rolls Royce and what was kind of supposed to be just a an interview per se but what ended up happening was we started talking about the COVID-19 pandemic and both Mitch and Will are two very educated uh, political <laughs> science students so as we started talking about the virus and the effects that it's currently having and could potentially have we got into a really serious but also I think anyway very interesting discussion about kind of what the world could potentially look like, how things are going to be. We definitely end off on a nice serious note, but also we talk about like how they're both kind of coping with being in quarantine and what's going on and their schooling and things of that nature. So I decided instead of doing like, you know, 40 minutes of that and then 20 minutes of music talk it, it felt like let's just stick with this conversation for for this episode and i haven't really talked about it and my my goal was to avoid it in a way but i feel like that's kind of silly because it's such a everyone's talking about it it's taken over everything and there's so much um false information and there's so much negativity that I was like, you know what? I feel like this is an intelligent conversation about it. I feel like there's there's things I'm feeling that I don't know what I'm necessarily afraid of and what I'm worrying about. And, you know, with what Will and Mitch were saying, it really just was striking a cold thing, really resonating with me. And I know stuff I was saying was resonating with them. So it just was a really good conversation. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Um, if you're someone who maybe is... Uh, very anxious about the COVID-19 pandemic and you don't really want to talk about it and hear about it, uh, maybe we best see you next week. Um, Just because this is, you know, we talk about it very heavily. That That's the pretty much the entire conversation is that. Um, but we do, you know, get some laughs at the end and kind of some more lighthearted, happy-go-lucky stuff. Not that the stuff we talk about isn't lighthearted, but, you know, things do get a little serious. But uh, I do want to thank Mitch and Will again for coming on the show. Wasn't what we had planned <laughs> when we started off. You'll hear me say in the beginning, like literally, oh, we're going to talk about this pandemic and then we're going to talk about this and talk about this and that didn't happen but i think it was still uh, a great episode and if you did not hear you got to go back last week when i had the guys on for a very special hotter show music showcase in which they basically broke down the whole ep for me that just came out larold and it is uh, a lot of fun you hear all the songs and they kind of dive into some stories behind the EP, the recording process. Really a lot of fun. So be sure to go check that out. Even if you don't necessarily have an interest in what's going on here today, please go check that out because it was a lot of fun to record. And they're two very fun, entertaining guys. So it's just a lot of fun to get to hook up with them. And uh, yeah, I'm going to just roll into the episode here right now. We have video for the whole thing. The video is kind of oddly structured, but... It is what it is. I still think that it's a lot of fun and that you guys are really thoroughly going to enjoy. It was nice to have some video. You know, I I, I think that my next few interviews, I'm going to try and do video now that my internet connection is a little better. You know, obviously not having the Mac to use to edit makes things a little more difficult, but I think we're going to try and roll with it here. I'm going to do video for my intro and outros as you're seeing right now. If you're listening to this, if you're listening to the audio version, that's okay too. You don't need video to be able to enjoy this interview and to enjoy the intros and outros and all that. But if you want to see me being awkward, <laughs> being super awkward, and just stare at the camera like this while I'm trying to talk and make sure I keep eye contact with the camera, you can do that. Check it out on the YouTube, possibly even Facebook. I might upload it to Facebook. I don't know. Haven't decided that yet. But anyway, I'm rambling. So we're going to jump right into my chat with Will and Mitch about the COVID-19 pandemic and the surrounding politics and and all that kind of stuff and kind of have a little event session and all that kind of stuff. So uh, 
without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're being joined on the show right now by Will and Mitch from Rolls Royce. Gentlemen, how's it going? Good morning. Good. It's, uh, Good morning. Better and better, as they say. How's it going yeah. with you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I have uh, what is not an alcoholic beverage here. Uh, it's actually not. I'm just joking. But uh, we yeah. all have mugs. We're also doing video for this here, which is really fun. It, it, it's something that I decided kind of at the last minute let's do because, you know, I've got two good looking guys here. So, like, let's Ooh, let's awesome. show you off and, you yeah. know. Well, you, um, you, gotta, you gotta catch us this early on in Corona because longer <laughs> this thing goes, we're just gonna look like garbage pail kids at the end of it. <laughs> the hair's gonna start getting a little straggly and... <laughs> we're all gonna gain, like, at least 15 pounds. <laughs> yeah, at least... That'd eating be. nothing but ramen noodles and Katie and assuming that's 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 all I see people buy at this point is just like cup of noodles and stuff like that. Like it's lots of nutritional value there. So it's a good. Purchase. Absolutely. That's true. Well, and so to give you guys a little um, a little backstory here. So we last week, obviously, if you guys heard, we did do a uh, showcase on the guy's latest EP, Larold, Larold. Yeah, I pronounced it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did it again. Um, I thought I was going to pronounce it wrong. But uh, so and during this, the, the couple things we touched on, like with kind of just with what's going on in the world and that. So I was like, let's just sit down and kind of have a nice, fun chat and just kind of, you know, catch up and talk about what's going on in the world. And obviously as well, this is the first time that we are having Mitch on the Hotter Show. So obviously, you know, I want to get into, you know things I usually ask people about, your start in music and all that kind of fun stuff. But just to kind of start off with the elephant in the room, boys, the world is kind of fucked up right now. How how you doing with it? How's, how's, uh, so are you, are you guys both kind of in quarantine right now? You're laid off, just kind of hanging out around the house or? Uh, I am uh, hiding at my girlfriend's parents' place. Uh, it's just me, her, and a stack of papers that I am marking. Uh, so I am still gainfully employed, um, but you know, I, I think uh, starting every morning with six beers in the shower is uh... <laughs> Ooh, <Dr. Rick. laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, yeah. I'm in. Uh, I was in Fredericton up until uh, a little over a week ago, and then I became worried that they might shut down. Uh, there, 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 there are some talks about interprovincial travel being um, temporarily shut down to try to contain the spread. So I figured I it was now or never for me to get out of the, the province of New Brunswick. So I'm I'm back home with my at my parents right now, but um, I still have exams and uh, um, I am unemployed, not because of the virus, but just because I was before. Um, but a I student. don't. Right, but I don't yeah. think uh, I I don't think it's going to affect my job. Hopefully, I say that now. Ask me in a, a couple weeks, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's 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 honestly surreal times, man. And uh, um, I don't know if <laughs> Will and I have anything too intelligent to say about this, but um, we we've definitely found ourselves at home with a lot of free time, and uh, so you know we've uh, been trying to use it as an opportunity to try to, 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 to get our music out there and try to get people to listen if we can. Come on podcasts. and Yeah, know. man. <laughs> it's either that or sharing dank memes. And the yeah. memes can only say is so fresh. Uh, exactly. These really hard times. You know, because the thing is, we talk about toilet paper scarcity, but the real crisis is the scarcity of dank and fresh memes. I was talking harder about this earlier, but... You know, the Tiger King memes, no longer dank, no longer fresh. The no, they're all old now. Memes, not dank or fresh. Um, so there is a real crisis out there. Right. And that's the lack of just funny shit that you haven't seen before. And with dank meme insecurity, <laughs> it, we all just wallow in existential dread and self-pity. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a public health emergency. It it's is. a necessity for sure. Christ that's sweeping the country. All the meme lords got to get on their shit and start <laughs> cranking the out these fresh... Are, they're quarantined, man, and they can't right. get the fresh stuff. The problem is the U.S. keeps yeah. taking all the fresh stuff. They're hoarding all the memes. Donald Trump put out a, a press release saying that he wanted to 
have to keep all the memes for ourselves, all the freshest. I have the freshest and dankest of memes. It's a terrible Donald Trump impersonation, but you get they the want to, They want to take a meme. They want to. We get. We don't have enough memes here. <laughs> you got to keep them here. Folks, you got to keep them here. <laughs> they, don't have, they, don't have, they have to make their own memes. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, I, God, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, it's really hard because we're like, I, I said this to the guys before we start. It's like, I'm trying really hard to stay as positive as humanly possible. And especially on the show, trying to, you know, bring something that's like, okay. Let me try and take you out of this for a little while while still right. addressing the – like this is the first interview I'm doing with someone that's – you know, like I did like a quarantined special with all my Pod Rate Network brothers and that was just total slapstick bullshit. Like there was no serious talks really except for me you know, telling people how to use a public bathroom properly because people were being disgusting. But <laughs> like talking about how, don't worry, this will actually kill the virus if you do this and if you use this chemical and blah, 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 blah. But it was very kind of slapstick. Like, I mean, we, we were we were talking about all this mm. dumb bullshit. So I'm trying really hard to be positive about it, especially because I'm someone who's still out working because I am yeah, essential. Hero. Essential no, hero. I am a hero, okay? I deserve a fucking parade. No. No, you deserve a raise, Hotter. Oh. Yeah, some basic protections. That Contact basic, basic my CEO. Workers. I will. I, I'll write an angry, stern email to him that will <laughs> that will threaten a 70% income tax uh, on him unless he starts giving raises to his employees. I mean, I was saying this earlier to Hotter. Like, this entire crisis really demonstrates uh, the kind of the who we really need in this economy right now and how undervalued they are. Even yeah. in terms of the fact, where's our legislation for hazard pay? Like, where is that? There's new measures that we need to actually implement in terms of policy that could really improve people's lives and could also create incentives to working in these jobs. Because even, like, how long are people going to kind of put up with some of these really bad conditions to what? Work a job that, what, they could die for? For, you know, $14 an hour? Yeah, like, yeah, who's going to do exactly. that? That's a terrible trade. Yeah. That's, that's a garbage trade. And, you know, unfortunately, we're in a province where, uh, you know, our premier prevented even raising the minimum wage to, to $15 an hour because, oh, that's too expensive. That will kill business. But in our time of crisis, the, you know, now essential workers, now they matter, of course, when they're most needed. So, you know, hopefully the one silver lining of this entire corona situation is that it really brings forth, you know, who we value in our society what role they play and how much they're worth because there's such an, a shitty stigma on people who work in the service industry i've worked in the service industry uh that they're dumb they're stupid they're not you know there's like this class component towards it that they didn't do the right things oh they're not working as a graphic designer or a marketer or something like that that's a professional kind of bougie job but at the end of the day these are the people that you need to actually run this system Mm -hmm. And it's it's time that we start valuing them and not saying, oh, thank you for your service. Oh, clap, clap, clap. No, do dollars and cents. Yeah. yeah. Value. Value. Don't get me I, wrong. Like I love, you know, like I'm – and I'm someone who's you – know, I'm in even what some people consider another run down from, you know, customer service, whereas yeah. I'm in janitorial. So that's even like another step down where it's like – Oh, like you literally clean toilets. Like you must yeah. be really stupid. And it's like, and and don't get me wrong. Have fun sitting on Corona. Like, what do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally. Who do you think is like? I mean, where I work, we are in a position where no matter what happens, we will not be closing because we have to stay open for the professional drivers, um, so that they can use the bathroom and get a bottle of water or whatever, you know? So, so, that, so that people have things in the stores that they want to buy in order yes. to survive in quarantine. You need toilet paper in a really roundabout way. You need us and you need me because if I don't do my job, then these truck drivers who are, you know, at risk as well are going to get sick or they're going to walk in and go, Oh my God, look at this disgusting washroom. I don't want to use this. And they're going <laughs> to, not use the bathroom, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but it's as much as it is great to, 
you know, I've been getting a lot of like quote unquote pats on the back lately, which is great, but I can't pay my rent with a pat on the back. No. Right. You know what I'm saying? What, what was that? <laughs> the, the Beaverton had that article, Will, where it's like something like local man who praises essential workers as heroes will oppose increasing their wage to, a, I guess, a living wage in nine months or something. Yeah. Obviously, it was worded in a much more... Uh, eloquent way oh, but yeah. yeah i get what you're saying though yeah but even things like rent freezes like like that is something that you know it's one thing to say oh we're going to keep it up for april or, or whatnot but look if if we're in this kind of quarantine economy for another two months which <laughs> i think the most conservative projections are are suggesting right now they're saying uh, like july or some july like or, or august i mean we need to start freezing rents we need to make it easier uh for for people to afford to stay home and then not have a vital portion of their income, you know, sacrificed to the gods of what? Their, their, their landlords who, I'm sorry, in a lot of cases have benefited from federal programs to defer mortgage payments. So we're deferring mortgage payments for landowners, but we're not doing anything for average people on the ground and people who might often be just working these essential services. Yeah. Somebody needs a break in this system. And it's unfortunate that the measures that have been passed now have not been nearly as far enough to really support working people in this economy during this well, crisis. Well, the scary thing for, I mean, I can speak for myself, you mm -hmm. know, for me, I'm still working. So I'm still getting a paycheck. Awesome. What happens if in say a month I get sick mm -hmm. and I can't work anymore? And then I go to get EI yeah. and all these other people have already millions of people are already on it as a lot of them should be, you know, I'm not yeah. sitting here saying that people should like that, you know, that's all I'm saying at all. But what happens when the people who are out right now on the front line, so to speak, then need this program so they can literally pay their rent mm -hmm. because like me, they got a letter from their landlord basically saying, we understand this is a hard time, but pay but, us. <laughs> pay but, us. Hey, the government will take care money. of you. Yeah. yeah, it's when it, when you know goddamn well that they're getting, uh, you know, help with paying for their fucking mansion. But that's you know, for sure, rather, for sure. here nor there. I mean, the the big issue right now is, and and hopefully, I mean, so much of this is out of our hands because of the, the kind of multiple layers of of government that really prevent comprehension from emerging, right? Like we're dealing with a provincial government that honestly is not keen on sort of extending social welfare. And we're dealing with the federal government that when they are for extending social welfare, it has to be means tested. It, and by means testing, it means that they won't just issue checks to people. They need to make sure that, oh, you know, does it clear this income? Have they worked for 14 days, right? They create all these stipulations, but the unfortunate problem in this crisis is that the people that are supposedly to administer these issues are working from home. And when you have the majority of the government bureaucracy that is supposed to handle these situations working from home, they're not going to be on the ball on this. You can't just roll out new systems easily. So we have a serious crisis of, of sort of bureaucratic coordination. Now, I'm of the belief that we should just implement some sort of temporary universal basic income, mail people checks, and when they do their when they file their taxes next year, then you sort out these sort of issues of income, right? But at, at this point, if you mail everybody a check, that should be enough to not only keep people spending in the economy, which is a, a serious concern <clears throat> because no one's buying as much, yep, and allow for people to cover, you know, things like rents. And, and things like their, their basic existence, because it's even in the CRB benefits right now that, that, are, that are out there, you know, it, it might be 10 days before you get a check. You have to have your number from your CRA returned from last year. Um, it had you not, if you don't file taxes the year before, you're kind of screwed. Um, so there's serious political problems right now that really have to be sorted. And the issue is, is look, We'll be out of this thing in three months. But guys, we're in a recession. We're in yeah. a really bad recession because some of those, there are going to be businesses that are going to go under in these next three months. 
that are not going to come back. We're already seeing it. And that's the, I mean, even a, a, a favorite place of mine here in town, you know, they were not open very long and they were doing fantastic business and they were doing great. And the last time I was there, I was talking to the owner and he said, he said, if we have to close, he says, that's it for us. We're done. Like we yeah. will not be able to recover. He said, you know, he says, he says, and that's on me. Like he's like, we were not as prepared for, we were not prepared for something like this, but he's like, what are we going to do? And, you know, they've now closed and they're trying to be optimistic on Facebook and stuff like that, you know, on social media. They're saying, we'll get through this. We'll be back. But the reality is they very well might not be. And that's the crappy part is someone who worked at a small business. I can't imagine being a small business owner in this type mm -hmm. of a, a situation right now. Brutal. It's heartbreaking. It's brutal. Because even in the event that, you know, you have, let's say you go under and, you know, the government comes up with programs that say, oh, well, you know, we'll give you, uh, you know, these no or low interest loans for, you know, two or three years to get you back on your feet. Who says that's going to be enough to do it? Yeah. Right. Like, it's not clear that you can just, you know, water the ground and, and suddenly, you know, business grows out of it. I mean, you know, you need seas, you need sunlight, you know, it's, it's a more complicated process. And there's going to be serious structural damage. The other issue by not having rent freezes, right, across the board, I mean, we desperately need commercial rent freezes because basically you're having businesses that are having no money come in um, and they're still paying rent. Yeah. And that's that's like their biggest overhead. Um, so, you know, that that's a really easy way to, you know, kill businesses is having these commercial rents that just continue during this crisis when it's clear demand for services and demand for products is down because either people can't go to their house or they're either only going to the grocery store, you know, they're shopping at the, you know, the pharmacy or they're ordering from Amazon. And that's just not the way to, to, to deal with this crisis. Um, mm. So that that's concerning. And at least, you know, from viewing it from the perspective of just policy um, and, you know, the issue is, is, is who knows what we're going to be at in, in six, seven months from now, economically speaking. Yeah. That's a whole other part of it. And I mean, you know, this is, this is coming from, and th this is why I think it was kind of cool to have you guys on to talk a little bit about this as you're both, you know, um, political. What, what's the, what's the actual, what's your actual majors? What is the actual term for it? Is it just political science, political science? Yeah. That's yeah. what I, that's what I thought, but you know, I, I, I am, an everyday person who's working and doesn't know a lot about these kind of things, but I know there's, there's issues. I mean, you look at the fact of, and I'm, I'm proud we're not going to dwell on this the whole time, th th this whole conversation, guys, don't worry. Like we're, we're, we're getting to, to a point of this, but like as someone who, you know, I'm looking ahead because unless I get sick, I'm working until this is over. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, do I personally need a government check right now? No. But does my fiance? Yes, she will. Does, you know, my parents who are small business owners, how the hell are they going to be able to afford to pay their, you know, pay their mortgage or whatever? Because they, well, I mean, There's not deferral. to say the, mor not say the mortgage, yeah. but like, okay, that's great. They have to worry about the mortgage, but then like, okay. You know, my old man's out of work for potentially three, four months. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so what happens in six months when this mortgage freeze or whatever is done? Yeah. Then what? And, you know, someone like me where I'm going, okay, mm -hmm. I'm confident. And I just keep saying this, you know, my fans like, I'm confident. Well, we will get through this. Like, we'll be okay. But <laughs> in six months time, when things start to kind of people start, you know, flocking out and, you know, uh, we get past our second round of Corona spread. Um, will we really be okay? Will things kind of, yes, now everyone's healthy and this is great, but then what are going to be the ramifications of this? And that's kind of the, you know, not to be a Debbie Downer, but that's kind of the scary thought of it is like, what the hell is going to happen? You know? Right. So it's um, I'll, I'll make two points here, Hotter. First, uh, yeah, like the w Will and I met 
uh, in grad school studying poli sci, and that's kind of like where the band was formed, and mm. our our roots are in like a, a political theory class that we all took together, right? But like, you you don't have to go to you know, you don't have to be a political science major to to understand understand like, that there's of, issues. Like, yeah. like your experience is so so it, it clearly shows that you you know what's going on and that like you 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 comprehend how people are hurting, and uh, uh, obviously how something needs to be done, but. Uh, the other thing I'll say to like your point on six, seven months from now, what's it going to look like? My fear, um, and I'm going to use a big political science word here, but, you know, we've been in about 35 years of, of uh, neoliberal uh, economic politics. But, but, but you define neoliberalism now. I don't want to be like a, a dick or anything, but like seriously, like maybe right. just unpack it for listeners here if they're not familiar with the literature. It It's basically... Um, it, 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 it's sort of a, a, a political consensus of, uh, you know, dismantling uh, the post-war welfare state. So it's like, it's more or less extending the logic of capitalism onto as many facets of, of human life as we can. So you see that in privatization and, and massive corporate tax cuts and cuts to social services and, and stuff like that. And so... Um, in a time of crisis like this, especially where the government's going to need to spend a lot of money to keep the economy afloat, my worry is in six or seven months is that, like, we're just going to see these neoliberal trends totally accelerated, and uh, like, it's if if we're not going to be willing to raise taxes on the yeah. the top earners in this country, like, the 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 these social services are just going to be absolutely decimated. Like, I'm worried about our healthcare system. Quite frankly, I don't know if it's going to be able to take the hit. So, so I'm of two minds of this position. On the one hand, yes, the they use this term called kind of convergence, or um, which suggests that all international, all global welfare systems are converging to sort of this uh, neoliberal apex, whereby uh, things like pensions and stuff like that are private, right? So they're not done by the state, they're not done by government, they're done in the private market. Healthcare is privatized. Um, there's less, uh, you know, sort of social insurances that are offered by the state. However, I don't, I don't believe that this nece- this crisis will necessitate that return uh, or retrenchment, as Mitch is discussing, uh, because I think institutions really do matter, and I think how societies are set up now will have a um, or, or will kind of dictate what their options will be from this crisis. I think a country like the United States is in serious trouble from this crisis because it has private health insurance markets um, and it has so much levels of of government that you can't really get clear coordination. Um, So think about it, it, here's just a quick Canadian American comparison for one second. So Canada, we have a Senate, but our Senate really doesn't do very much. Our Senate is a you know, a little bit of a regional kind of reflection. It's appointed. It's largely considered a rubber stamp. Some people say that it's a sober second thought, but ultimately speaking, it doesn't do that much. Now in provinces, we don't have senates, right? So provinces running by a majority government can effectively do whatever they want. Um, you know, that it obviously doesn't violate the charter, uh, but even if it does, they can still put in section 33 in some cases, but I'm not going to get into the weeds of that. The U.S. has a Senate that is separate and very powerful, federally speaking, and that acts as a check, right? So they use the system of checks and balances. So it prevents quick policy from going through because it's conceivable that one Senate is controlled by one party and the House is controlled by another. But where the U.S. gets even more sticky is that every state has this problem. So you have a federal government that is prone to gridlock, and then you have state governments that can also be prone to gridlock. Mm -hmm. And this creates a huge problem of coordinating a response during this crisis, coupled with private healthcare markets, right? And media that perhaps doesn't, or hasn't taken it very seriously, is a recipe for disaster. Now in Canada, we're really, really lucky that our institutions are far more coordinated. Even in the case where, you know, some people would say uh, Doug Ford, very neoliberal, 
he spent the majority of his his tenure in office, you know, trying to make cuts, um, trying to to sort of uh, allow for more of the private market to take over. Pissed off a lot of teachers, pissed off a lot of nurses, et cetera, et cetera. That being said, and I've been very critical of the premier in in the past. Um, the premier is kind of walking back a lot of those positions. Yeah, and it's because he has to. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, he's deferring to the federal government. I don't like the federal government that much either, but he is deferring to them. So it's not clear that they're going down the route of neoliberal solutions or privatization or those sort of things. Um, so the institutions here really do kind of play a role in how that works. The United States, on the other hand, who knows? It is really a crapshoot. I mean, the U.S. probably by the end of this, well, by the time this podcast airs, we'll have at least 500,000 cases of coronavirus and likely 15,000 deaths, maybe even more. Um, and that puts us as a country that's been very responsible, that's kept death count low, uh, that, that's, that's been trying to practice social distancing, that's been trying to get a very good coordinated message out, that puts us at such a serious danger because it's conceivable here in Canada that we can control it, but we could get blowover from the United States. And yeah. the U.S. does not have this under control. So... Just to kind of simplify my point a little further is that institutions matter, that border, like in this case, like separation matters, differences yeah. of, of how we do government in Canada versus how the United States does government do change outcomes for these sort of diseases. Um, they do matter. Um, and so I, I obviously am, am empathetic to, to Mitch's point, but I do think that there is going to be a great deal of divergence. Um, and a lot of it's going to be predicated on what systems are in power and where. And the unfortunate cost to all this is that in some cases, more people are going to die and more people are going to get the virus than in others. And that's the real heartbreaking um, side of kind of these benign structures. Yeah, either way you look at it, I mean, <clears throat> as far as from any and i appreciate your guys points on this because like you know i um i knew getting into this like we would get into kind of this this kind of a discussion and you know i feel super smart just sitting listening to you guys talk about <laughs> your points in that because to me like i look at it from a very you know i guess a and b type of scenario but then there's also C D E F G and so I I I really appreciate um can you guys kind of giving your thoughts and you were like you kind of breaking things down a bit because at the end of the day something everyone I think can agree on regardless of anyone who might be listening to this thinking you know for some reason even though it makes sense to me but if you're like oh no you're wrong and here's why blah blah blah, blah. and that's neither here nor there. I think what everyone can agree on is we need to stop the spread of this fucking disease mm -hmm. <laughs> and we need to take care of our sick. And in order for us to do that, like are there going to need to be some changes made as far as from the standpoint of where money is going, who it's being given to, what services are we focusing on? Do we really, really need to give money to, you know, I'm not going to say this one thing mm -hmm. when in reality, how the fuck are we running out of medical supplies for, you know, our healthcare workers? And then I'm seeing, you know, Jane from down the street mm -hmm. walking into her house with six boxes of medical masks and gloves. Yeah. Which is a whole other – that's a whole other discussion. But I'm like, should – where is our focus? And I think now what's happening and what I'm seeing at least is the social distancing, people are starting to stay home. I'm seeing it in Peterborough here. I'm seeing it at my work, which is a major highway. I'm seeing things slow down. I'm seeing people stay home. I'm seeing th things in, in stores where I walk by an area that is – you know, stocked with sanitizer. And I'm like, okay, people are to understand that running out and hoarding all the supplies so that, oh, I know I'm safe. <laughs> you know, I'm seeing people in stores. And this is kind of a, a little bit more light to kind of end off this part of the talk here. But 
Um, not that what you guys were talking about wasn't important enough, but just I'm seeing the because there, there's a lot of time there where I was seeing the bad part of humanity, where I was yeah. seeing you know last night. I'm cleaning up gloves and masks off the floor in a public washroom because people are just throwing them all over the ground. And I'm seeing people get mad because we're not taking cash anymore, which has been sent down from us from the higher ups. Yeah. And we and have no control over it. Yeah. And people getting mad because, oh, well, I'm not standing six feet away or I'm seeing people ranting about, oh, well, I was standing in line at the grocery store with my three kids and my husband, and they said only one of us could go in to get our groceries, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, they and just might as well. Inf- <laughs> yeah, it's such a simple, to me, it is simple that it's, it's painful because I'm still seeing people not taking it seriously and not following it. And they're like, oh, well, my rights are being violated, and you have to take my money. It's the law, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, Listen, this is not some kind of a ploy Mm -hmm. to get us to, oh, oh, next thing you know, they're going to invoke martial law and then and then they're going to tell us we can't leave our homes and blah, 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 blah. blah. It's like, no, listen. Oh, and here comes the military now and they're going to start, but they're handing out fines. And it's like, listen, all of this is being done to try and help to stop the spread of this disease because people are not fucking listening. So they have to then start being harsher. Next thing you know, Judah's going to walk out of his house with a cigarette. And just be like, listen, stay the fuck up. Like, yeah. it's going to get to that point where it's like, how, how much more? And I think, will it need to come hmm. to that? That we have to literally have police officers walking down the street fighting people for walking? I, I Who's to say? But what I am seeing is the majority of people... And if you're one of those people, I applaud you and thank you because you're doing what needs to be done. You are staying home. You are going out with one person to go out and get essentials. You are running into a grocery store. You're following social distancing. You're getting the quick things that you need that are on your list. You're stocking up on your essentials and you're getting the hell out of Dodge. You're being nice to everybody. You're being respectful. You're being clean. That's all we have to do. To me, it is so simple in the sense of just helping stop the spread of disease and then it, once we get through this we can worry about everything else mm. but as a population what we need to do to me is so simple it's painful that i see people not doing it right uh Hunter, i'll agree with you especially insofar as like um one thing that i think we've all noticed that in, in many cases, right, these uh, so-called essential workers are not really treated or paid like they're essential, yeah. right? It's in in it, in many times it's it's as if they're disposable, mm-hmm. and and you know like just hearing your your sort of stories about just people being like treating you guys like trash, throwing stuff on the ground, like that's that that's not good to hear, right? And yeah. it's, um, I... and, sorry, but, sorry, you go ahead. I I have something I'm gonna say after, but you go ahead. Right. And then the other thing I've kind of noticed here, and it's it's a bit of a there's a bit of a paradox at play here. And I think Will could probably speak to this. I know Will always has some to say, but <laughs> no uh, I got you, buddy. <laughs> um, right. The we we've seen that with how should I phrase this? At least economically speaking, right? Like, you know, people are only supposed to go out and, and, and buy essentials, right? Mm-hmm. And uh that has put us into a recession because uh people just don't have the they, they're either out of work and they, they can't afford to buy things or the, the businesses themselves have been shut down due to safety protocols and they're, they're not providing the goods and services. So they're just not there. Right. Um, but at the same time, like people are being guilted about not having saved enough money, you know, not, not preparing for a rainy day. And I, I don't know if you can kind of reconcile those two things because it's like, like what we've seen is that as soon as you only buy essentials, the entire economy collapses. So it's like, it's almost contingent on, in many ways, frivolous consumer spending. Yeah. And as soon as you get rid of that, the whole system goes to shit. People are saying, you know, oh, LCUBO is not essential. I guarantee you. First off, beer isn't essential anyway. Um, <laughs> but I guarantee you, they close down all the LCBOs and all the beer stores. 
think of the hit that's going to take. Like yeah, that's they, that's a scary thought. They they yeah. need the, the the revenues that that generates, and I think yeah. too that there would you know they they, they probably just want to mitigate foreseeable public unrest if they shut this oh, stuff for down. sure yeah <laughs> i mean there, there's that there's also a public health issue in the sense that if there are people who are um alcoholics uh the the withdrawal will kill them mm-hmm. yeah well, that's the other um, too. so uh, that that is that system. is that that was the that was the point that was brought up by cam h um but I mean, to Mitch's point, though, more broadly, I, I think it's very interesting how much, yes, our economy is predicated on frivolous consumption. And the, the moment you strike back to, to sort of basic essentials, obviously, the whole system kind of busts. Um, but on the flip side, though, I do think it's really interesting. And this is the point that Hodder was bringing up prior to this, was that, you know, we saw the worst elements of humanity. So the moment that they are in crisis and initially when this was occurring, they were hoarding, they were buying as much as they possibly could. But isn't that a very interesting uh, psychosis within our, our system that the moment there is a crisis or the moment there's a problem, our first impulse is to consume, mm-hmm. it is to buy our way out of the problem. It, maybe that is a degree of sort of psychological catharsis for people that they literally treat themselves or that they buy because that's a sense of control. You as the consumer, your control within this entire huge structure is mm-hmm. what you can purchase. But the moment that that's taken from you, now what are you? Um, so I do it reveals think that, how impotent the average person is, right? I don't know if they're impotent, but it, it's it's not to say that they're impotent, but that how powerless that they are within sort of this larger structural system. Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like what you're saying is, I mean, again, I can speak from myself. Last night, my ass went and bought a bag of Twizzlers. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm feeling guilty because I'm looking at this delicious snack that I love and enjoy thoroughly. And I'm like, should I be buying this right now? Yeah, it's only a dollar seventy nine or whatever. But should I really be buying this delicious snack when this dollar seventy nine could be used towards maybe I'll be a dollar seventy nine short for my rent next mm-hmm. month? Yeah, you know. And it's like, as someone who already financially is not in the greatest position, mm. should I be doing this? And then I went, you know what? Yes, because right now. I am in a position where, you know, I'm stressed in the sense of there's a lot going on. I'm seeing these things, you know, an hour prior, I was just called a sacrificial person because I'm still working. And I was like, wow, okay, right on. That was a, that's an interesting thought. Um, So I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to buy this fucking bag of Twizzlers because this bag of Twizzlers is going to help the economy. And that was kind of my rationalization that I made. in my (laughs) right and and that's essentially my point like obviously if it came down to it you're going to prioritize like you know paying your rent over getting a bag of twizzlers but 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 that's my point on a macro scale if we all stop buying the proverbial twizzlers we've seen that the yeah (laughs) which is is a really bullshit thing to say but like yeah yeah it's if we if we stop buying the things that we are consuming out of enjoyment how is that gonna affect the economy not to mention then we'll all be Absolutely. I have no problem with people buying essentials, but then also, hey, I'm going to buy this bag of chips. Hey, I'm going to get this case of beer because I'm at home, staying home, trying to be safe. And I need to have a couple beers while I'm having a shower, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there, there is this interesting point, and this was also brought up by Mitch earlier, which was that, you know, we're told that we we need to save, we need to do this and that. But then we're also told through marketing through social pressure that we have to spend. And in fact, our economy is so predicated on us not saving and on us spending. So in some regard, you know, we're created sick through, you know, marketing or, or just the actual, you know, way to keep this whole system going, but then we're commanded to be sound. And um, that's very I, I, that's, uh, Christian, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like we're, 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 we're broken, right? Like we have huge yeah. industries uh, you know, marketing in particular, that is there to deceive you as the consumer to buy something that you don't need. That's not mm-hmm. essential because that's how we keep this entire machine running, right? Uh, that's why they mail you credit cards. You know, they'll, they'll send it to you. They don't give a shit about your line. They don't care. They put a 20% interest rate. They want you to fail. 
Now, I don't mean this in like they, like, ooh, some nebulous thing. No, people the man profiteer on that. Wants yeah, you to, man. No, no. I you're saying, yeah, yeah. The people profiteer on, on your failings, right? And so there's so many pressures in our society that kind of push people. And then the moment there's crisis, they say, oh, well, you didn't save enough. You're irresponsible. Yeah. Now, the only silver line in this whole crisis is, is nobody was irresponsible enough to, or no one was responsible enough to predict this. No one saved enough. Air Canada did not save enough. You know, Bombardier did not save enough. The oil industry did not save enough. So it's not just us that are having these moral failings. Yeah. It's also large corporations and people that, that honestly get bailouts with no strings attached while average people kind of struggle and have to say, oh, well, you bought that Twizzlers hotter. You're not responsible. You should be thinking about rent yeah. and be miserable. Um, so, you know, hopefully this whole crisis kind of puts these philosophical questions into perspective. I don't know if they will. But, you know, I hope for that because, you know, as the ancient Chinese proverb goes, you know, where there's chaos, there's opportunity. And I hope there's opportunity for a better world to be born out of this really kind of sad um, situation that we're in. For sure. And I mean, like kind of shifting on that, like to that thought, um, because this is kind of my my plan was to talk about this for like 10 minutes and then get into other stuff. But I'm no, 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 no. I'm really... I think this is, like I said earlier, how I'm trying to almost kind of avoid this in a sense, but at the same time, now that we're talking about it, I'm like, you know what? I'm loving talking about this because I think it's something that is silly to avoid. Right. You know, now well, that I'm in it, doing we're discussing. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Everyone, you, you've been doing it on it for a month at least now, right? And yeah, you got you got to keep Will on a, a short leash, otherwise he'll just. <laughs> But I also I knew that coming in. I was like, you know, I've had the pleasure of you know getting to know Will, and that you know when he was on the show last time, like there was a, a few moments where like I loved hearing you, you know, and you as well. It's like talking about these things that you, even though it's not me taking a knock at myself, you know more about these things than me. But then also I'm, you know, in it right now, seeing the what's going on from the perspective of someone who's still out in the workforce like mm-hmm. you, not that you guys aren't working or doing anything no, but like you know what you're doing absolutely. is just as to someone who is an essential worker what you guys are doing to me is just as essential it's just as important because you know i had a great discussion with a guy the other night who he, he came up to me and he apologized that he came in because he said he says I'm not an essential worker. I'm not a truck driver. He says I'm I'm sorry I was even here. Like I feel really bad that I had to stop. And like I said, no, no. Like I'm sure you have your reason. He said, well, I'm trying to get back to my my kids. And I'm like, so to me, you have every right to be here. I have no problem with that. It's the people who are you know coming in in families of seven and getting Wendy's because they want mm-hmm. Wendy's. I'm like, you're allowed to want to get Wendy's. That's perfectly okay. Let me just say that. Mm-hmm. Do all seven of you need to come to get Wendy's? Mm-hmm. It's it's little things like that, you right. know. The... Send one person to pick it up for everybody else, and exactly. you know, seven times less risky. <laughs> exactly, and I mean, you know, like this this gentleman, it really struck me because like I could see in his face that he was like ashamed of himself for going out, and I was like, like I said to him, like I mean, thank you for the thought, but I said, look, like. I've seen you because, you know, he was one of the only people in the building at the time. I saw him walk in, you know, I saw him washing his hands. I saw him being very cautious of what he was touching. I saw him get a bottle of water and he, you know, grabbed that one bottle of water. He didn't fondle everything on his way out. And, you know, it's so important to, I think, to, to the people out there. And if you're someone who's listening to this and you're, You've been cooped up for, you know, some people have been cooped up now for two, three yeah. weeks. And, oh, well, I can't go get groceries because I'm not supposed to. Mm-hmm. It's like, listen, you can go get groceries. You just have to be careful and you have to be smart about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to, some people, what they're doing with the whole social distancing thing, I'm seeing where, I mean, you see it on social media and stuff, and there's these great videos floating around of people, you know, going to their elderly neighbor's place and they're standing six feet away from their window or 12 feet away from their Mm -hmm. window and they're talking to them and they're checking in on them and seeing if they need anything. And 
it, it gives me hope. And I mean, this is a, you know, a, a, a podcast of saying this, but I, I feel, and I've been saying this a lot where even last week, guys, I, you know, I talked about it on the outro where I feel like as a whole and as a, the all of humanity, we are going to be okay. I have faith in humanity that we're going to pull through this. We're going to be just fine. Is it going to be a little rocky? Absolutely. And people that are thinking otherwise, you know, that's your opinion. But the reality is, yes, things are going to get a little shaky. And, yes, things are kind of scary right now. And there's all this uncertainty right now in the world. I mean, I was about to start a new job that I've been working to get for 10 years. And it's now completely off the table for the time being. So for me, I was like, wow, this is the shittiest <laughs> timing in the world. Yeah. But yeah. I'm still like, hey, in three or four months, I know that job's still going to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I think that's why for me, there's this light at the end of the tunnel for me where I'm like, okay, this is what I'm getting towards. So I've got to be safe. I've got to be cautious and be smart during this time. So I can get to this goal here, you know, mm-hmm. while still trying to, you know, uh, drop a new episode of the show every week and try and make mm-hmm. people forget about things and or bring an interesting point that makes people think and hopefully in some way, shape or form through discussions like this even, you know, where I think that there's a lot that people may not be aware of as far as why they're, I guess, afraid, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, hey, here's what, like what you were saying about earlier, William. It's like, here's what is potentially going on. Here's what could happen. Here's what we're concerned about, mm-hmm. so that it's not like almost, I guess, hidden and it's being kept in. Because I think that's the worst thing right now. And I say that to everybody, like, I say that to my crew. I'm like, if you guys, like, I check in with them every every day now when I come in. How are you doing? Good. No, no, no. no. How are you actually doing? Are you actually okay? Are you mentally speaking, are you okay? I know health wise you're fine, but this is a really heavy time period. And if you're yeah. listening to this right now and you're a little freaked out and you're a little, you know, uh, stressing out and that, I mean, you know, never be afraid to reach out to people and talk to your family. There's people that are taking social distancing literal and they're, not speaking to people. Mm-hmm. And that's the worst thing you can do at a time like this. A lot of the reason why I wanted to do video today is so that I could physically see another person, you know? And I'm like, I'm talking to, even though I'm still seeing people regularly, you know, like I could, I can see Will and I can see Mitch and I can see them sitting there staring at the computer, you know, and see their, their handsome faces. And it's like, it's, it's such a, oh, Thank you. I'm going to catch them. Okay. There we go. Uh, it's, it's so, and I'm, I'm going on this fucking tirade and I'm just spinning in circles now. So I'm going to end my tirade here. But what I'm trying to say guys is I genuinely believe that we as men are going to be okay. Reach out to people who may need it. If you feel you need to talk to someone, talk to someone and just be safe. That's the number one thing to take away from this tirade of what I'm saying. Just be safe. Try your best to stay as positive as possible. Tiger King is fucking awesome. Go watch it. Um, <laughs> that's, I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> but kind of getting ready to wrap it up here and ending off on this um, discussion. And real quick, Mitch, before we go anywhere, I promise that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you on the show like solo – sometime now because i want to like hear about all your stuff but this this kind of turned into like a a, a rona discussion and and yeah. i was enjoying it too much to break i thought it. it might yeah that's yeah i was amazing. like how long it's can possible. we really go about this and i was like okay i feel like i have a lot i want to talk about too so i was like okay let's let's just you know do this but um but it's been fun and kind of ending off on a more kind of i guess uh lighter note i guess in a way what have you guys been doing as far as like just hanging out at home? Like what have you been doing to kind of entertain your time? What's some shows you've been watching? What have you been consuming at a eating wise? What's uh, what have you guys been doing? Uh, well, Will and I are both still in school. So, um, I, 
yeah, it's 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 not the worst place to be. But um, yeah, so up until like a few days ago, I was working on a paper, uh, and that that kind of kept me busy. Like it was good to have something to work on, um, and I I still have uh, an exam I need to prepare for, um, so that's kind of kept my focus. And then like honestly, man, just like sending out the EP, um, like coming on here doing stuff like this, um, it's it's been good to have something to focus on. And I, I, it's, it's definitely brought me a lot of, uh, you know, just comfort and it's a good way to pass the time. Um, and I've been watching, it's always sunny. So. Fantastic show. And it, it's so important too, for creative people to be creative during this time period, whether it's writing a paper or, you know, <laughs> getting ready for the EP stuff. Like I think, you know, there are people that are just sitting around watching TV all day and they're not having ways to express themselves and it's like you you gotta it is such an important thing to do for sure especially for creative people who normally are creating or they're playing live and it's like you got to be able to express yourself for sure and and i've been like i've been texting all my friends asking them how they're staying fit when they're stuck inside so i've been trying to develop some sort of like i don't know workout routine let's call it that i can do in my basement and uh it, it's you know like i was squatting with a fucking hockey stick the other night like it's oh fuck yeah bud we're, we're all trying to make adjustments as it were to 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 kind of get through this um but i've never used so many video streaming platforms in my life like, <laughs> like fucking skype zoom uh facetime um there's a, a google one like it's this is like the fifth yeah, one google i've used this week out. google hangouts yeah we were thinking about doing like a band Google Hangouts and like trying to play a song with lag. Uh, that probably won't work, but like whatever. No. Like, who cares? I don't it know. Was, it was my sister's birthday uh, a couple days ago, and we had like a family Google Hangout, and everyone tried to sing her happy birthday while my little cousin played it on the piano, and it was just oh, so Lord. disjointed. It was very cute and wholesome. <laughs> yeah, for like sure. That, but I, but, but I like immediately that's... thought of of Will being like, we should like get together and jam on it. Is it would not work. <laughs> Yeah, it'd probably be a shit show. I mean, I don't know. I, I've been watching a lot of Smallville uh, with my girlfriend. You know that show from like the 2000s? It's a fantastic Superman. show. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, we've been watching that a lot. Um, and it's kind of like, it's kind of stupid because like a part of it's like, oh, haha, remember 15 years ago before coronavirus? Uh, so, I mean, there, there is kind of a, a nice nostalgia there. I've been grading. I'm playing a lot of uh, video games. I'm playing a lot of um, the latest Call of Duty Warzone. Um, I am a child. Uh, I don't know. I it, like it sucks, man. I'm I'm bored. I, like I I try to play guitar a little bit, but like it's it's so hard to I think play in these conditions just because it's like I don't know. There isn't much to write about as of now because I have no sense of certainty. And I think until That's something to write about, yeah, I don't like writing about uncertainty. But, that, but I, then at the same time, Mitch, it's like Mitch writes songs about uncertainty, uncertain relationships. I write songs about concrete things. Uh, that that's our division in songwriting, typically. <laughs> uh, you know, in the case of David, he's uncertain if you know his materials will work out. In the case of Don't Let Me Go, it's a relationship. You know, I, I don't write songs like that. I I like certainties. I like hard facts. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of this is very touch and go. So, I mean, you know, hopefully we're out of this in three months, but, ah, you know, that Who knows? I, find, I, find I just wake up. And, I was talking to some of my friends. They just wake up and, and they say they have a good, like, scream. Um, <laughs> Catharsis. Yeah. There you go, Hotter. Yes. It's all, it's you, all have to, you have to give a catharsis. Yeah. <laughs> give them a cathartic cool. response, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, everyone needs their like. I I had a, like a week or two where I didn't do a podcast, mm-hmm. and that was right around the time I had my little freak out, where I was like freaking out one day, and I was like, "Why am I freaking out so much?" And I'm like, "Oh, I haven't done a podcast in a couple of weeks. I haven't had that. Even if I'm not talking about what's on my mind, it's like having this. You know, again, me just using the words I like to that having that legit cathartic release to just." Here's just bleh. even if it's even if I'm just spewing bullshit, not talking about anything in particular and laughing at my own jokes and stuff like that's even, you know, it's like, wow, I feel better now, you know, mm-hmm. absolutely. So it's something definitely important. Um, 
But as far as this conversation here today, I mean, I appreciate you guys coming on and hanging out and kind of helping me w- wade through these my thoughts and all this bullshit here with what's yeah. going on because I think it's something that was was needed um, as much as it wasn't what I what I had planned. I think it was uh, I think it was a lot of I mean it was fun in the sense of I I feel more informed and smarter so I'll uh, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm glad we can help you uh, sort through some of these uh, complex <laughs> emotions by giving you more information that you can then stew on. Uh, but hotter, like honestly, if you or any of your listeners uh, are bored and want any reading material, uh, I'm sure both Mitch and I can give a, a huge citation list uh, of references to this conversation that would, uh, you know, if you want further reading, there, there's stuff you can read. <laughs> One thing that I'm keeping my eye on uh, is uh, I know The Intercept is having uh, Naomi Klein on. She's a Canadian author who wrote a book called Disaster Capitalism, which was about um, basically like how the the state responded to Hurricane Katrina. And uh, she's going to, you know, she's going to talk about her, her theory um, in the context of uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the uh, I don't know. I find like she's very, uh, she's well spoken, and and it's it's very accessible stuff. And it's like it's yeah. it's like this. It's a a, a podcast because they're doing the social mm-hmm. distancing stuff too. So that's cool. Definitely give a look at that. Even what we can do is if you guys want to send me maybe a like just like message me a list even yeah. of some some of the stuff you were talking about. Like I can even put it in the link down below or whatever and just say, hey, if yeah. you guys are interested, here's here's some stuff. Here's here's some stuff to chew on. I mean, like. I'm not really here to like proselytize or anything like that. Yeah. But I think the the big thing is is just to say, you know, these are these are just some mm-hmm. ideas to to consider, uh, especially now. You know, you're probably gonna be bored anyways, and at some point you run out of things to watch on Netflix. I'm not a fan of Ozark, so you know. <laughs> uh, okay, this conversation is over. <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemy! Yeah, Get the hell out of here. I'm muting you. No. Uh, but but seriously like that and obviously uh if you're really really bored uh you know listen to the record Laryl. yes uh, most uh, we, do, we do we do uh cover some of these ideas of of uh you know i guess crisis and uh the wanting of you know human contact so i guess some of those are overlinking i hate i, I feel like that like i'm trying to pimp the album during a crisis i don't like this <laughs> but uh, then again, we can't even tour, so here we sit. Um, so, at the end of the day, just support everybody. Check out the new EP because it's awesome. If you guys did not hear our discussion last week, I implore you to go check it out. It is definitely was a lot of fun getting them to dissect the songs off Lerald, which is again a vast EP. Go check it out wherever you find your music and on the Bandcamp. What's the Bandcamp? Bandcamp.com. Yeah, check it out on Spotify too, or Apple Music, or Wherever you know. Stream your music. It's you guys there. are adults. You know how it works. Yeah. You know. And I'll have the links down below for the guys' social medias. Be sure to go check them out and and uh, hit them up. Don't try and find Will on Facebook though, because you will not find him. You will um, not find me. I don't exist. <laughs> no one will know. Actually, you can't find Mitch either. You can't find any of us. Uh, so just, just if, if you have a question, we have an email, uh, Rolls Royce band at gmail.com. And if you have any concerns, inquiries, or if you just want to yell at us because we're saying bad things on this podcast then feel free to. Yeah. Hit them up. Not me. Cause I won't be able to answer your questions, but no, uh... <laughs> no, no. no, just all, all your, your swearing and, and your, uh, you know, rants about 5g or something like just send it to us and I'll get Mitch to respond. Diplomatically. Of course, okay. yes. Of course, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll bring it to our management, and uh, we'll give you a very generic email response. Okay. I'll bring it to the Hotter Show press team as well, and we'll uh, you know we'll make it happen. Yes, the press team. Yeah. All right, <laughs> all right, boys. Thanks so much again for coming on. Stay safe and uh, wash your hands and everything. And we'll hopefully next time we are able to chat with you guys, things will be a little lighter. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully, and- hopefully. All right, Thank boys, you take for care. having us on. Thank us for having us on. Yeah. Right. Guys, there you have it. The Harder Show's COVID-19 pandemic uh, special, I guess, with Mitch and Will from Rolls-Royce. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, maybe you got some information. 
and hopefully near the end they were able to kind of make you laugh and all that kind of fun stuff. It, it's a really uncertain time right now. And I think that, like I said, in the, near the end there, me kind of avoiding it, I think was a little silly for me to kind of, you know, I, I'm in this position where there might be, I mean, not a lot of people for sure, but there might be a person or two who is looking to hear my thoughts on it and hear how I'm doing with it. And I think it's important we talk about it and that we, express our concerns and we express what is we're afraid of because it's so uncertain i mean by the time you guys hear this you know because i'm recording this a little in advance by the time you guys hear this there could be some major changes um good hopefully but who knows what's going to happen you know it, it's a very uncertain time but you know like i said we have to just all stick together we all have to band together and look after one another guys and just be kind to everybody, you know, thank your essential workers and your service workers and your healthcare workers, especially, obviously, and your doctors and all that. Um, keep yourself entertained, stay inside, stay safe, wash your hands, you know, eat some fruit, drink some water, you know, uh, I guess try and stay as active as you can in, in your <laughs> indoors. Um, just uh, just look after yourself. And if you know, if you need to talk to someone, reach out to people, reach out to your family, do video, FaceTime, you know, that was an important thing for me too, being able to actually see the guys and talk to them. That was really fun for me, very cathartic. This whole episode was, I cannot stress enough how cathartic it was for me to, excuse me, to be able to unleash all this stuff that I was kind of feeling and talking and thinking about. And it was nice to be able to have two guys who are, you know, exponentially smarter than I am <laughs> kind of break some things down for me that I just kind of made me it made okay this makes sense to me okay this sounds correct to me and even if there's some stuff politically speaking that they said that maybe you didn't agree with that's okay too you know we don't all have to agree on the same things but like I said at the end there guys I think we can all agree on the fact that we have to look after our sick we have to look after each other we have to be kind to each other that's regardless of your political views or your whatever we can all agree on that so that that's the main takeaway i want everyone to uh have from this this podcast is hopefully maybe you got some information you know you're you're readying yourself for things that could potentially happen but we're obviously hoping don't happen um and yeah that that's all i'm going to say on that for now but before i go i of course want to give a major shout out to my patreon supporters one of which is actually will so that was a lot of fun to get to have him on the show um and of course my boy scotty um, if you guys are at all interested, excuse me, my voice is totally cracked there, hilarious. Uh, if you guys are at all interested in helping support your boy during this time, especially, but also just in general, check out the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the harder show. Um, we have a few different tiers. You can join up there for a monthly subscription. Obviously at a time like this, I don't even, I didn't even really want to mention it, but I, I at least want to make sure I give my shout outs and mention that that's where they're coming from. The hotheads. It's all from my Patreon. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming, you know, I, I may or may not have some t-shirts that I was kind of sort of ready to start rolling out and getting the thing going until the, this whole thing happened. So probably the next couple of months, you'll see that rolling out. Um, maybe even if you hit me up, I'll give you a sneak peek at the design. Maybe, maybe I won't. I don't know. But either way, we should keep up with everything that's going on with the harder show on the Facebook and Instagram as well as uh, be sure to subscribe to however you're listening to the show, whether it's on you know Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or iHeartRadio or, or or you download the episode from YouTube and then listen to it. Or if you're just watching on the YouTube, uh, the actual watching of the actual video, be sure to also hit the subscribe button, leave a like or dislike, comment if there's anything that you think that Will or Mitch said specifically that you either you disagree with or you haven't thought on, you know, I'm sure they would love to have that discussion with you. Keep it. If you, if you disagree with people, that's fine, but don't get into a political bait on my comments, please. Cause that's, that's, that's I, don't, I don't want none of that. You know what I'm saying? But if there's anything I said, even that you want to debate, which I don't, I don't think you should. Cause I think everything I said, at least personally is, uh, <laughs> I, I try to, I try to keep things pretty, you know, talking about, just my experiences and from the from the eyes of a frontline worker right now who is work still working with the public and everything but uh, either way be sure to comment and let me know what your thoughts are and everything that's going on let me know what you're doing 
to help pass the time and what you're eating and what you're listening to. I would love, love, love to hear from you guys. You know, even if you want to send me an email, the hard show at gmail.com, let me know what you're doing this past the time, what shows you're watching, what movies you're watching, what games you're playing, what podcasts you're listening to, hopefully this one, what music you're listening to. I would just love to hear from you guys. Hit me up anytime and we will have a little chat ski. But that's going to do it for me here today. Thank you so very much again for tuning in. Stay safe. Love y'all. And I'll catch you next time on The Harder Show. Take it easy, guys.